Hello friends, so let's learn some tricks to remember the new drugs for your upcoming exam. There are some 25 drugs that we are going to learn here. And do not get afraid, we are going to learn all of this with some easy mnemonics. That is the tricks to remember on which drug is used where. So starting with the first one. So you have the drugs here that is Brixanolone and Zuranolone which are used in postpartum depression. So how do you remember this basically is remember it as brexanolone and zuranolone so you tell to the mother postpartum like post delivery do not feel lonely no loneliness feeling is what you should get so remember that do not feel lonely brexa you can remember this as brexit right so brexit the exit of the baby from the mother's womb leading to the depression so remember that is brexit and Zura. What's the name of the female uh, who has delivered the baby now? That is Zura. So Zura, Braxid, no lonely. The difference here are Braxan alone is given IV, Zuran alone is oral. Next one, so like you have no loan, no loan, no loneliness after the delivery. Similarly, you have loan and Rone. Jepirone is also for depression. Now, the important point here, what's the mechanism of action of this Jepirone? So remember that Jepirone is Rone that is receptor 1. So it is basically your 5-HT receptor. In depression, we know the role of 5-HT serotonin. And remember, this is 5-HT1 agonist. This is not an antagonist. You are not seeing any ant or anything in the name of the drug. Ant generally stands for your antagonist. So this is not Jepirant. This is Jepirone. Right, so these were the drugs that we have seen for depression. Can you tell me the drug which is called NASA? So remember, NASA drug, noradrenergic specific serotonin wala drug is mirtazapine. We have seen the tricks for that in our videos on the app. Remember that NASA pe kon ja sakta hai? Who can go to the NASA? Only a mard. Someone who's mard, strong enough, can go to the NASA. And remember that the mard, basically, what is the previous AIMS question? It causes minimum sexual side effects. Mard has to maintain the mardangi, so the sexual side effects are minimum. Next uh, group of drugs here, trophenatide, tofersane and nidoseran. Trophenatide. So remember that trophenatide, FE, is used in a female disorder that is RET. N tells you some neurological disorder. And pro is TR is RT. So remember it as RET. Trophenatide is in red. Recent uh, INICT exam question as well. Similarly, you have tofersane. So, what does tofersane tells me? Antisense oligonucleotide. Sense, right? It is sense. Antisense oligonucleotide. So, it's a ASON is antisense oligonucleotide for SOD. So, remember TOF and SOD. Okay, TOF and SOD. They are going together. So, TOF and SOD. Basically, that's your tofersane. And this is, so you can imagine like tofersane is kisi ka naam. Like it's tofersane. So, Mr. Tofersane. How is this Mr. Tofersane? He is very, very alsi. Okay, very lazy, very alsi. So, where is it used? This is used in ALS. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis T40. Remember, this drug is given thecal, intrathecal. What are the other drugs for ALS? You have Riluzol and you have Idaravone, right? All of these have also been asked previously. So remember, Tofersane is ALC ALS. Tofersane, Thecal, TOF is SOD mutation and it's antisense oligonucleotide. Similarly, here Nidoseran. Okay, remember Nidoseran, S I R N A, small interfering RNA. This is S I R N A against. LDH in the liver it inhibits your LDH ka production and effectively it is inhibiting the oxalate synthesis so it is used in hyperoxaluria basically to it's used in hyperoxaluria to decrease the oxalate levels so remember nidoseran is like the liver says nido that is nahido LDH for oxalate okay nahido LDH so, this is Nidoseran Nahido LDH. Next one here is uh, Oma Viloxolone. Oma Viloxolone. 
So remember that this is not your no loan. The no loans, the Brexano loans, Urano loan, they were for postpartum depression. This is Zo loan. So again, this is something for neurological disorder, Friedrich ataxia, and remember that VLO. So Friedrich ataxia, we know that the patient gets wheelchair bound at an early age. We have discussed this in trinuclear therapy disorders about Frederick. Frederick is a friend who is very sweet. He is a singer and suddenly he becomes theta. Right? That's a trick that we have learnt in our videos on Metsynapse. Coming to the Alzheimer drugs, monoclonal antibodies, Lecanemab, Educanumab, again telling you NN, NE or NU or N. That's basically neurological disorder. And remember these can and can. So remember in Alzheimer's patient can't remember anything. Right? The memory is affected. There is dementia. So remember can't remember is for can't remember is Alzheimer's. But do not confuse this with galcanizumab. This is not for Alzheimer's. So how do I remember which is for Alzheimer's is? Remember for Alzheimer's the A and the L. Right? For Alzheimer's it is the A and the L valid drugs. So aducanumab and lecanemab. Basically they are preventing the amyloid deposition here. Galcanizumab. This canizumab is used for migraine. Okay, this is used for migraine that is acting against CGRP, right? So, remember this galcanizumab, this is for migraine. Nirsevimab, so remember this is virus wala, consa virus, RSV. Another drug for RSV, pa palivizumab is what we have seen, palivizumab, which is for P for prophylaxis. Again, the virus is the RSV, okay? Remember that baloxavir is not for RSV, this baloxavir is for influenza, okay? This is for baloxavir is basically for influenza. Next we have is Ilakestrant. Let's have a look at this group of drugs now. Ilakestrant, retifanlimab and fizolinitant. Ilakestrant is EST receptor like antagonist. So EST is estrogen receptor antagonist, ANT antagonist. So basically these is your SERD, serotonin, uh, sorry, this is your selective estrogen and receptor down regulator. Okay, it's a down regulator, it is an inhibitor. So wherever you are inhibiting, this is used in estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, especially which has the ESR1 mutation, ESR1, estrogen receptor 1 mutation, right? And who is this female who has got this uh, breast cancer with ESR mutation? ESR is E E Ella. Ella is the female's name who has got ESR mutation. And remember the C4 in Ella Kestrant, you can remember this is used in cancer. This is used in cancer, okay? Then you have retifanly map. Another cancer, this is for Merkel cell carcinoma. Where is it acting? It is a PD1 inhibitor. Remember the PD1 on the T cell interacting with PDL1 on the tumor cell. So that interaction basically prevents the immune response against the tumor against the cancer. So to avoid this, we want better immunity against tumor. So we use the inhibitor of these drugs. So these come under your immune checkpoint inhibitors. PD1 inhibitor, you have pembrolizumab right, uh, nivolizumab used uh, in non-small cell lung cancer. Then you have your uh, PDL1 inhibitors, right, ETA, EVA and durvalumab, the PDL1. So these are used in various cancers like pembrolizumab. Where do I use pembrolizumab, which is another PD1 inhibitor? Where do we use this? Pembroli is P and E. So pulmonary and endometrial, that is uterine. So this is what has been asked previously as well. Pembrolizumab is the P and the E. Okay, the pulmonary and the endometrial. Now, the so we were talking about Ilacastran we have seen. Coming to Retifanlimab we were seeing. Retifanlimab, you can remember that reti I. So it's on the T cell acting on the PD1. Fanly, that is family. And you know that Li is basically related to your lymphocytes, something related to the lymphocytes. So this is the T lymphocytes pe PD1 pe act karne wala. R e ko ulta pado is ER. So this is Merkel cell carcinoma. Okay, that is Merkel cell carcinoma.
कार्सिनोमा राइट मर्कल सेल योर सी के ट्वेंटी वाला है ना नेक्स्ट वन फिजोली नी टैंट फिजोली नी टैंट इज अगेन यूज इन फीमेल विच फीमेल जो इज योर नाउ हु हैज जीरो मैंसेस दैट इज पोस्ट मेनो पॉजल फिजोली नी टैंट दिस इज यूज फॉर पोस्ट मेनो पॉजल हॉट फ्लशेस नी टैंट is again a antagonist where is it the antagonist n e that is your n k 3 okay this is your n e t is like your n k 3 receptor antagonist fizoli nitant is post menopausal female zero is your post menopausal nitant is your n k 3 antagonist next one the diabetes drug tirzepatide and sotagliflozin So remember the tied tied valid drugs. We have seen the mnemonics in short short for diabetes drugs. So tied valid drugs basically get a tied. They get a tied of the insulin from the pancreas. Okay, they get a tied of insulin from the pancreas because basically they are related to your GLP, right? So remember that tilde but tied is unique in that it is acting on it's acting like both agonist the GIP the glucose dependent. insulinotropic peptide previously called as gastric inhibitory peptide and the glp so remember that this is acting t for two uh two substrates that is the gip and the glp one also ir is insulin related okay this is insulin related and it is causing a tide of it's causing a tide of insulin coming in the ze is to remember that it causes zero weight gain that means basically it causes weight loss so this is used in diabetes insulin related and obesity it is causing zero weight gain so it's used in obesity diabetes obesity sotagliflozin flozins remember again from a mnemonic flozins urine flow wale drugs that is your sglt2 wale drugs but what is the unique feature for sotagliflozin Again, this is acting on two. That is SGLT one and SGLT two both. So this is the inhibitor of both SGLT one and SGLT two. And remember, where is it used? Sotagliflozin is used for sota hua heart. That is basically for heart failure. The heart which is sleeping about to sleep failing for that we use this sotagliflozin. Next group basically here is your. Belu mo sidil. So remember the dil valid drugs like uh, fasudil, natarsudil, right? Fasudil used in angina, natarsudil in glaucoma. What's the mechanism of action of natarsudil? The trabecular meshwork outflow it is increasing. So this dil is also your ro kinase vala drug similar to fasudil and natarsudil. So remember this is called as mechanism of action is ro. Ro kinase is cyclic. Uh, a uh, kinase ro dependent cyclic kinase something like that so remember it is rock so you remember it as b like a rock belumosidil it is b like a rock do not get affected is the graft if the graft that you have put has become bewafa right it's acting against the host itself the graft so this is used for chronic gvhd so b like a rock that is your b like a rock when the graft becomes the bay buffer that is gvhd right so belumosidil dil wale is your ro kinase similar to your fasudil and also your natarsudil fasudil natarsudil next is your vanoprazan somatrogon vanoprazan so this is like your pantoprazole right like pantoprazole so this is like pantoprazole so basically acidity wala drug it's like an anti acid how is it acting so remember the vanoprazan is your pcab that is potassium competitive acid blocker it's competing with the potassium and basically it's inhibiting your proton pump in the stomach so this is used for h pylori so vanoprazan op is like 0 p that is antagonizing the potassium okay this is your p cap vanoprazan or vonoprazan right and remember that the advantage with this is you can give it without any like time limitation you can give it any time okay this can be given any time vonoprazan can be given any time unlike the pantoprazole the ppis that need to be given 30 minutes before the 
food itself. Next is somatrogon. Is it used in growth hormone deficiency or is it used in acromegaly? So remember that somatro is something related to the growth hormone. And when do we use it? When the growth hormone from the body is gone. So if the growth hormone is gone, you give somatrogon. Why? Because this is a growth hormone analog. So this is used in growth hormone deficiency. What do we use in growth hormone excess? That is acromegaly is what drug? That is pegui somant. Right, so there you need your growth hormone antagonist. So that is your somant is your antagonist. Soma again is your growth hormone and this is antagonist. So it is antagonizing growth hormone. So remember that pegui somant is acromegaly. Somatrogon is growth hormone when gone. That is growth hormone deficiency. Okay, that's growth hormone deficiency. Coming to the last slide here. Where do you use your rosanoliximab, zilucoplan? Right, both of these are used in myasthenia gravis. So specifically, I've written the spelling here as myasthenia Z. To remember that the ZZ valid drugs are what are coming here in myasthenia. Rosanoliximab and zilucoplan. What is the mechanism of action here? Again, related to your lymphocytes and uh, rosa. Rosa basically, if you remember, is related to fasting. Rosa matlab fasting. So what does rosanoliximab does? It makes the body fast, right, devoid of the immunoglobulin, right, the antibodies that are responsible in myasthenia gravis, it prevents the recycling of that. So, the antibody itself, it is not making available. So, it will basically the acetylcholine receptor antibody also and the anti-musk antibody also. So, this is, how is it doing that? It is acting on the FC receptor. Right, by acting on the FC receptor, which is responsible for recycling of the immunoglobulin, it does not allow that. So, ROSA is fasting of the immunoglobulin, that is for myasthenia. And Xylucoplan, so Coplan basically is your complement, Coplan is, Coplan is your complement, AN antagonist, which complement? The C5 complement inhibitor. Xylucoplan is your C5 complement inhibitor. Similarly, the other C5 inhibitor drugs are your ravulizumab and eculizumab as well. Remember E, C, E is fifth alphabet and C. So, all, these are also for C5, ravulizumab, eculizumab. Where have we read this? This is used in PNH, peroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, where the complement is very hyperactive and it is destroying the RBCs. We block the complement activation by giving this eculizumab, ravulizumab is PNH and myasthenia also. The last two drugs here, itracimod. So remember, itracimod. So this is your sphingosine 1 receptor modulator. So S1 is your sphingosine 1 and mod is your modulator. And where is it used? Ulcerative colitis, right? E-R-A-T is your ETRA, ulcerative ERAT is ETRA. So remember this is ulcerative colitis, that is your itrasi mod. By modulating the sphingosine 1 receptor, basically it is inhibiting the lymphocytes to come out of the bone marrow and uh, basically the inflammation is what it is reducing. So it is S1 sphingosine 1 modulator. Sipa glucosidase alpha, right? So it's like alpha glucosidase. Alpha glucosidase deficiency, where do we see? That is Pompe's disease. So this is used for Pompe's, where you have alpha glucosidase deficiency. Where do you have beta glucosidase deficiency? Beta glucosidase, glucosidase wala is gauchos, gauchos. Febreze, crabs is galactosidase. Febreze is alpha galactosidase. Crabs is beta galactosidase. We have seen the tricks for all of this in the lysosomal storage disorders. Make sure to revise these topics, the glycogen storage, the lysosomal storage before your exam. In biochemistry, you will definitely get questions on these topics. Remember them with all the tricks that we have discussed in our biochemistry videos on the app. So those were around 25 drugs that we have tried to remember with the mnemonics. The PDF is available on the app, uh, right? So you can find it in the PDF section and along with the video. So make sure to revise it and remember all the tricks because if you get question on this, it's going to give you that 
one extra question correct that makes a huge difference in your ranks thank you so much all the best and keep studying keep revising and keep winning thank you